Hi, and welcome to another edition of Inside Batman Beyond. I'm Jason Hillhouse. I am here tonight with Bruce Tim, producer, Alan Burnett, producer, Glenn Murakami, producer, Paul Dini, producer. Glenn Murakami was a producer on this show, your first producing gig. King of the world, Murakami is. We're here to talk about season two, bigger order this time than the first 13. We kind of set everything up. You created the world and everything in the first 13. And now... They just and, said make some more until we tell you to stop. <laughs> just keep making them. Yeah. Which means that everybody apparently was happy with the first 13. It was a, an immediate hit. And uh, a lot of people who had been skeptical about the show were surprised by how good the show was. Sometimes I ask myself, is Batman just a suit or is he the man inside? Time to find out. The show was a hit. And uh, they wanted more. And after the challenges of creating all these characters and setting up the scenario, how do you continue and go on with another with another 26? Right off the bat, they actually wanted us to add a strong female to the supporting cast, a young teenage girl who hopefully would be in on Terry's secrets, somebody he could talk to and share his adventures with. At least now you're not alone with your secret. You have someone to talk to, someone who can help you out sometimes if you need it. I thought she was kind of an interesting character, and um, you know, Cree Summer, who played played her voice, uh, you know, we adore her. So we went whole hog with it, and she was in a lot of the episodes. I do remember hearing, "What well, is she going to know Bruce's secret too? Where does she fit in?" There was somebody totally new. She was not Batgirl. She was not Robin, or even Alfred, for that matter. She was just somebody who was a friend of Terry's and who was let in on the secret. You call me Robin, and I'm out of here. No problem, Alfred. Alfred. I thought Max would kind of represent the future or things that Bruce didn't know more, and that's how she would be a stronger ally to Terry. A little that, more hip to the times and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and on. but you know, Bruce would still school them in the end. You know, it's like I've been around longer, I have more experience, so this is what you know. That's what I thought. You should have said that then. <laughs> I, yeah. I did. And had you oh. gotten into See, the pit, I was the new guy. We, we disappointed you all the time. <laughs> it sounds like every time we talk about this, well, it's a big <laughs> disappointment. Right See, what's that. interesting is we like we'll talk about certain ideas uh -huh. and then we end up not doing them, and I never, I never know why. I, I didn't spend that much time on your side of the building, well, that's so why. I would always. Oh, yeah. But see, I wasn't included in on those, this is what the network wants. You were the new guy, are, the new producer. Yeah, I was. I, I, I did, oh. I think, start a lot of trouble by, because I didn't know those things. So, sorry. I and sometimes you, you want to see those ideas executed, you got to get in the, the, the story meetings with yeah. the writers yeah. and stuff. So I didn't get in the pit. Yeah. You didn't and get then, in the pit. Yeah. So You learned your lesson, though, didn't you? Uh, now you just run I, the show. I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm not listening to anybody. Here. Yeah, but that would happen every once in a while. We'd have a great, you know, design or an idea, and then we start, you know, working out the story, and then the story takes a, you know, yeah, a it goes a different way. Someplace sure. And... sure, sure. I've seen it all: demons, witch boys, immortals, zombies. But this thing, I don't know. It just feels so, so high school. This was the season where we were also because we brought in this girl character. We, they, they wanted us to move to the high school. They wanted more, less more high school stories. Yes, right. less corporate stories, more, more high school. We were stories. fine with that too because we were actually tired of the whole corporate thing. Yeah, we, right. we felt we'd, we'd done the, the, the powers thing yeah. enough. And you know, Terry was a teenager, and we kept saying well, the early stories felt just kind of like regular Batman stories. Mm -hmm. They didn't seem specifically Terry stories. And corporate. It's like, and Terry was a completely yeah. different kind of character than Bruce Wayne was. Like Glenn said, you don't want to do yes. too many corporate stories. You don't want to do too many villain, you know, rumbles. But you know, every once in a while, you throw in something like, like the Egg Baby story or something. You know, like we oh, like the Egg Baby. Yeah, story. that was a yeah. good story. That, that's fun. But that but also even that's got super villains. In it. I mean, they're not yeah. super villains, but they're villains. Yeah, well, you so. have to have. You always have to have villains. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's the tricky thing. But you know, by by setting the stories more in the high school, we thought that you know, well, if the gym teacher is a super villain and. And the school psychologist is a super villain, and suddenly everybody, the, the entire and staff, is a super villain. The kids are super villains. They're all super villains, you know. It's like it, it really starts straining credibility. Change schools, and man. So we were a <laughs> little bit district. leery of that, and we we did have a bunch of stories like that where a lot of the teachers turned into super villains, and it's like, okay, you know. So it, it was it was tricky. And we also, I mean, the other thing is we could just center a story around a kid. Which and we did that too. Which we did. Uh, not like necessarily. Like the good kid who, who turns out to be Lear of the Joker's gang. Or something like or something that. Like right. That. Yeah. Right. So, or the Joker. Willie Watt character who, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Joker with a Z. Yes. Yeah. Hipping it up. Jokers. 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 It's fresh, baby. <laughs> Keeping it real. And almost every teenager that we had as a recurring character had, mm -hmm. had a, a place in, in that. Howard Groot. 
I guess I'll be seeing you ladies at my shui party this Friday. <laughs> Super. Looks kind of familiar. Based on me. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun, that was a fun episode. Groot. I heard Groot. Who named him? Me. Groot? I don't know. You see yourself just... as a Groot? I don't know. What's a Groot? I don't know. That's what I think. Cross you. between Gru and a root. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's uh, um, it, I just came up with a name. He was like a schlubby character. So I said Howard Groot. That sounds like that's a, a that's a character. that sounds like the per it's a perfect name for the. I mean, you look at the guy on the show and it's, kind it of, is. It's a perfect name. Yeah. It just fits him. Yeah. It's very funny. Yeah. You look in the mirror and go, Ah, Howard Groot. All right. That'll be that'll be the one. Terry, today was beach day. Remember, where were you? Oh, just out saving the world, Ma. Season one, you have to establish kind of the foundation of what it's going to be. And season two seems to be where you were spreading, yeah. spreading your wings a little bit. Specific episodes that, that Let's stand talk about out? Earth Mover. There Earth it was, Mover. Earth Mover, yeah. We have, we have a difference of opinion on this. All right. Okay. Pros and cons. I, I, when you, you said a few moments ago, off camera, that it was one of your favorite episodes. It and is that, my just, favorite that just surprised me. Why? Because that was the most difficult episode. It was one of those stories where you got into it and it, you could not find a good ending. You couldn't get out of that story. It was really a horror story all the way to the mm -hmm. end. And I thought, this is as far as we can ever go on the, on the show, as far as tone goes. And dark. Yeah. Dark. I mean, it was a really dark story. It's very dark. And there's no... We went dark. Well, that's what, that, I, see, that's what I like about that well, show. I, know, I, I like I was... the ambiguity of it. I like the fact that the guy who's supposed to be the bad guy isn't really all that bad. And the monster, he's only technically the monster. Even he's kind of sympathetic. I like the fact that there's no clear-cut good guys and bad guys in that story. That's what I really like. It would have been really typical to make the guy who talked the dad down into the hole to paint him right. just as a complete bad guy. Right. Mm -hmm. But he's, you know, he made a mistake and his friend got killed, but he's trying to do the right thing by raising the daughter and everything, and he's doing it really out of a sense of guilt and, and, and duty. And to me, that kind of redeems him as a character. So you, it, you're kind of like, it's hard to hate that guy. You kind of sympathize with him. You want to kill me? Go ahead. I've got a lot to answer for, but for God's sakes, let Jackie go. She stays, and you die. <laughs> there's a father who's trapped in the ground, like a living corpse, and there's no way to free him. And he's and there was just no way to get out of that. That's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it cool. is cool. It's way cool. Yeah. It was pretty. Yeah. It was pretty horrific. It's, yeah, it's all-time hey. horror comics. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe once in a while we can do one of those. But well, no, I, we didn't make a yeah. habit of it. But that 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 to me was. Will you say that's as dark as it went? No. Yeah. No. Yes. We that's no. No, we got darker than that. No, we got way darker no, than that. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the past is out of the way past sicker story than, than No, but it's a it has a happy ending. Oh, everybody blows up. Yeah. yeah. Everybody <laughs> dies. The other yeah. story can't did, had no happy ending. Well, that's true. No, well, that's true. It's bleak. Well, maybe we should have just killed the guy at the end. It was, it was, he, we did kill he him. He was dead. No, that's right. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> he got blowed up. He was already dead. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, what did you want the ending to be? saw his little bone hanging from the wall. There was no way out. I suddenly realized if I had time, I would have started all over again. No way! It's a great story. I was started all. Over. How many of these meetings that apparently Glenn wasn't allowed to go to did uh, did you guys? I mean, everybody's really passionate about. No, no, not very often. No, we were usually no, all I'm on saying, the same I'm page. I'm not looking for yeah, like, yeah, you know like yeah. everybody punching each other in the face or anything. But I mean, as as things went like that, I mean, part of the creative process was that like part of kind of you guys what fueled those kind of things, those kind of discussions and things like that. Like I said, not not usually. I mean, for the most part, we were we were mostly on the same page. Um, I stirred it up from time to time. Occasionally, and occasionally, <laughs> when, when they lied you, and you, I, I, I got taken aside and told that uh, I suffered from uh, first-time producer <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> Bruce took me aside and it's like, you can't start trouble like that. I like it. If you want out of the cave, you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. You're kidding. None of the Robins ever complained. A lot of stuff changed, you know, between conceptual stage and, and the script phase and the, the, some of that was due to the writing and some of that was due to you know when you when you get into the heart of it you realize the story's taking a different turn and you may not like where it's going and sometimes we would come up with ideas and the writers would take those the other writers would take those and turn them into something else I'm, I mean I remember a robot story about a robot who was a thief who kept stealing things because it wanted to feel the same feelings by taking this I should be experiencing you know the delight uh, that, that a human has in this and I really like that idea but I just you know, couldn't do anything with it at the time, so I gave it to Bob Goodman, and he looked at it and he goes, I can't make anything out of this. So he changed it and worked it around. That eventually came to the Zeta uh, episode and from the Zeta series. And when I read his idea, I was going like, well, this isn't what I had in mind, but if it works, then, you know. You got a two season series out of it. Yeah, so what did I know? There you go. She swore that it wasn't what it looked like. She meant it. 
I could tell. Ah, to be young again and gullible. As you're coming up with this stuff, and especially brand new things that you don't have some kind of source material to go back from, mm -hmm. what kind of inspiration? I mean, you're talking about like you just watch all kinds of movies, read all kinds of comics, and I know everybody rushes out and buys a bunch of Jack Kirby and and, and that kind of thing. Is it? Well, a lot of our a lot of our younger guys have never even heard of Jack Kirby. It's weird because that's that's the that's how old we're getting. That's how long in the tooth we're getting. We're getting these new guys who go, Jack Kirby, who's that? So we we force feed them like you know a steady diet of Jack Kirby comics. Say, look at this, and they go. Oh, so um, that's really sad. It's frightening, but it's a good education tool. I mean, you've got to, you know, it, it, it prompts creativity to look back on some other things. Yeah, but the fact that they don't know well, Jack yeah, Kirby is, is that, just sad for us. That's, that's tragic. That we're old. That's all. It's just, it's just, you know. But you get to show them. Yeah. Oh, it's cool to see them discover it. Thanks. For what? For reminding me why I got into this. It's been so many years now. But you never really forget, do you? No, you don't. Well, any final thoughts on season two before we sign off? It was the happiest time of my life. <laughs> it was all, nobody fought. It was all handshakes and rainbows. Other than the zombie script, everything else was great all season long. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you soon. Enjoy the shows. <laughs>